So I think today we're just going to have a quick look at a fairly obscure feature of the Twin Otter Extended and that's the flight data recorder. Now I think this is a feature that's overlooked by a lot of people mainly because it's not all that clear what, it, what it's actually for. I mean, you know, we can infer what it does. It's a very simple device. So you switch the thing on and then you go and fly <laughs> and then you switch it off. And that's essentially it. And basically what this thing does is it's a, it's a black box, you know, we're all familiar with that term. It just logs various parameters connected with the aircraft systems as you fly and then you can go back and review those later. You know, it can be instructive to go and review what you've done with your flaps and the radios and so on. But you know, there's no obvious compelling reason why you would want to do that. But we'll have a look at a few ideas about that as we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it up, barge it around a quick circuit and put it down with the flight data recorder on. Then we can review the log and uh, see what we can do with it. Okay, so we're ready to go. First thing we're going to do is we're going to switch on the flight data recorder. Then we're going to put some flaps down, 10 degrees of flaps. We're going to put the parking brakes off. And everything else is ready. Let's go. make a passing attempt to do a kind of circuit but we're not really interested in doing anything too tidily we just want some data to review when we come down so we're heading out west we're going to we're going to top out probably a bit higher than a normal circuit so a little bit under 2000 feet should be safe here Turn it here. Onto a southerly heading. 1800. Get rid of the flaps. There's the field to so the downwind. If we just try and fly in from about here, we can't get a straight in on this because we've got kind of hills in the way. And we're going to slow it down. Go to flaps. We'll go to flaps 30. Right, we're way too high, really. But that's okay because we're going. We're going to use this just as an example of looking at the data. I'm going to slow down too much here. We kind of want to poke it through that gap there in the trees around the side of the hill. Let's go to full flaps. Well, we're going to be very long here, but we'll still try and do it. This is a twin otter after all. We'll go for reverse. No problem. And then we'll stop. Then we'll switch off the flight data recorder. And then we'll go and have a look at what we did. So the first thing we're going to do, we just open up the Aerosoft Recorder Manager. And we get this fairly simple 
Explorer style display showing us all the flights we've logged. The one we're interested in is the one at the top. So double click on that. This is the flight we've just flown. Now we get some miscellaneous information up here which we're not too interested in but uh, we'll just have a quick look. It tells us which aircraft we've flown, the payload and fuel on board. We've flown seven, about 7.2 miles. Takeoff was at local time 0553. But if we look at this bit down here, this shows us the events that were logged on route. There's very little stuff to see in the log because we didn't do very much. We can see the airspeed and the altitude, so we stayed more or less below 2,000 feet. Then we put the flaps down progressively 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, and then full flaps on. So that's pretty uninspiring to look at. We get some position reports here as well, but uh, if I close that, the next thing we're going to do is if I right click on that and do export flight to Google Earth, that's the important part. Vernonia sloppy circuit. It's going to try and load it directly into Google Earth. If we don't have Google Earth installed on the FX XPC, so we're not bothered about that. So here we are in Google Earth looking down on the strip. And if I load the flight data. This is what we see. We did a pretty credible circuit, you might think, but uh, if we look at the profile. We took off going this way, went up fairly steeply, turned over to the south. Fairly precipitous descent into the strip. The details pretty good. We've got our initial taxi out there and if we go to the end of the flight you can see where we turned around and stopped. So that's all very well but it's not exactly earth shattering you might think. Uh, but there is one situation where I found it extremely helpful to use the flight data recorder. If you watch my recent SciTech radio panel video you'll see me flying on Pilot Edge. Now Pilot Edge in case you don't know is an air traffic control network. It's genuine live air traffic control staffed by um, mostly professional air traffic controllers and they take things very seriously. And what it means is you really need to start thinking about airspace before even taking off. Uh, you don't want to get things wrong and violate any of the airspace restrictions otherwise you get your wrist slapped. Uh, and that's kind of hard. <laughs> you know if you look at the especially if you're flying in Southern California which is I neglected to mention where Pilot Edge is based Southern California is some of the busiest airspace in the world and the airspace if you look on you can look at the sectional chart on skyvector.com and uh, it's just extraordinarily complex and part of the problem is you've got to plan your flights based on a 2D representation a flat representation of a three-dimensional system of airspace and that's really quite hard to visualize now, as we've seen, the Aerosoft Flight Data Recorder allows you to export your flight logs in a format that plots the position data on Google Earth in three dimensions. And as luck would have it, we can also get that airspace data as a set of Google Earth files, which, which means we can look at the airspace restrictions also in three dimensions. And this is a whole different ballgame because what you can do is you can fly your flight live and you can load it into Google Earth along with the airspace and you can see how you did. You can, and more importantly, you can do this beforehand. Let's say if you're going to fly this on Pilot Edge. I mean, this is nothing to do with Pilot Edge really, but uh, Pilot Edge was the impetus for, for thinking about this more seriously. But you can fly offline and you can rehearse your flights and review them on Google Earth with reference to the 3D depictions of the airspace. I mean, first of all, it's just really interesting to do that. But second of all, it's a fantastic way for becoming familiar with the airspace as a three-dimensional entity. So let's have a look at that. So let's just take a look at that flight that I did on Pilot Edge. This is the area of Southern California of interest. This is Sky Vector and we're looking at the sectional chart for that area. And the flight's from Fullerton Municipal Airport here. And essentially we go to the east and then we turn south, down to the coast, and then on down the coast 
to Palomar, but uh, let's just look at this step by step. If we look at Fullerton, the first thing to note is we're underneath the Fullerton air traffic zone. That goes up to 2500 feet. That's this rectangular dashed area here. So while we're in that zone, we're under the control of Fullerton Tower. Let's imagine that, as before, we're taking off on runway 24. So we're taking off to the west. We're going to make a right turn as we're climbing and then a downwind departure. So we'll shortly be out the top of the air traffic zone. But what we've got to be careful of, if we look closely at this, we're also underneath some Los Angeles class Bravo airspace. That's these blue thick lines here. And it's kind of difficult to make sense of this uh, in two dimensions, but we can find the numbers we need. This is the important part here. This is this part of the class Bravo goes from 6,000 to 10,000 feet. So we're OK as long as we stay below 6,000 feet. However, if we stray too far to the north, which is not very far at all, given that we're going to be going out and then turning downwind, the ceiling of that comes down to 4,000 feet. So we've got to be careful of that because we're going to be climbing pretty fast in the Twin Otter. We want to be heading roughly 070 degrees. So we tend to veer away from that lower part of the class Bravo as we climb. Then we're out the top of the air traffic zone and once we're outside of this piece of airspace here we're okay to start our turn to the south as we continue to climb but now we've got to worry about this airspace here. This is a uh, class Charlie airspace. This is John Wayne airport is down here and all this airspace is managed kind of in the vicinity of John Wayne. Again, we've got 2,000 to 4,400, so we've got to make sure before we get into this airspace, unless we ask for a, a transition, which we're not going to do, we need to make sure we're below or above this airspace. So we climb to a minimum of 4,500, and we, we'll be heading towards this VOR on El Toro, formerly El Toro Naval Base. And then, so, then we'll go to the coast, then we'll turn down the coast towards Palomar, the other thing we've got to worry about here is this restricted area. In fact, this is two restricted areas in one. There's a, a fixed restriction up to, I think it's 2,000 feet. And then there's a notified restriction, which goes up to, I can't remember, but a lot higher than that. How much higher than we're going to be flying? But you can see, this is just kind of difficult to make sense of, even when you sit down and study it and try and puzzle things out. Now you can imagine trying to do this on the fly with a chart in the cockpit. It's kind of difficult unless you're familiar with this airspace. So here we are back in Google Earth. This is the same area. We're looking at satellite imagery in Google Earth. And if I load that flight, here it is. And uh, if we zoom in on it and just have a quick look, you can see that's the execution of what I've just described with reference to sky vector. But the really interesting thing is, if we turn on the airspace, there is the class Delta airspace. So we're looking at the Fullerton air traffic zone. There it is. This is annotated. These 3D objects are annotated. So if you click on them, you're going to get a little legend that tells you what you're looking at. So you can see these are just showing the deltas at the moment. So Long Beach is out to the west, La Salle down to the southwest. And you can see we've uh, pretty quickly topped out of the Fullerton ATZ. And like I said, we're steering slightly south of east so that we drift away from the Class Bravo airspace. So we've just turned that on. You can see how complicated this is. Uh, hopefully you can see this. So right overhead Fullerton, we have this Class Bravo, which goes from, as we looked on Sky Vector, 6,000 up to 10,000 feet. But perilously close, if we head too far north, and you can see I was pretty much on the edge of that, that airspace comes right down to 4,000 feet. And if we bust that, we'll get slapped. But we managed to avoid that. Uh, the next thing to do is, given that we're going to be continuing to climb to 5,000 feet, we want to make sure we're out of that, out from underneath that Bravo, before we make our turn to the south. 
and uh, in practice there's lots of ways to do that we'll be looking out the window we'll see Disney if we pass Disneyland where's Disneyland that's Disneyland there if we pass Disneyland or in fact if we hit the orange freeway I think that's the orange freeway I might have got that wrong maybe that's the orange freeway then that's a sign that uh, we're we're well clear of that Bravo and we can turn towards the south but if we add in the class Charlie airspace <laughs> you can see how just super complex this whole system is I'm trying to get a good vantage point where we can see it all as a, as a whole so there you go we're Fullerton traffic zone there Bravo above us Charlie ahead of us 2000 to 4400 so by the time we hit that Charlie we've climbed to above its ceiling so we don't need to check in with anyone of course we could have flown underneath that you know if we're happy to stay low we could go underneath that class Charlie but uh, we haven't got too much headroom with some of these hills around so kind of safer to go over the top if I just zoom out we get a much better uh, impression then we turn southeast down the coast where we're out of controlled airspace pretty much all the way to Palomar Carlsbad that's the air traffic zone for McClellan Palomar again we're right, uh, right on the edge of a class Bravo here this is going to be San Diego so we've got to be careful uh, of that now something that's not shown on here which we can also dial in it's shown on here is class X which is basically everything else <laughs> uh, I think these are military drop zones for parachuting and, and stuff not really sure what the red red things are but for our purposes this uh, this kind of greenish blob here is the restricted area now it looks like we've busted that um, here because actually there's two restricted if I if I click on the annotations here separately that one's by notification from 2000 to 11,000 feet but the lower one is surface to 2000 so there you go that's just a practical use for the flight data recorder and I think you have to agree that's pretty cool